Hi again everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another speed build video in The Sims 4. Happy Easter Sunday, I hope you're all having the most amazing day ever so far and thank you so much for joining me here today. So today we are back, we are building in Brindleton Bay on my all time favourite lot. I've built in this lot so many times I can't even count <laughs> but we are building something very out of my comfort zone we're building a sort of like a dutch colonial style family house i will put the reference image that i used that i found on i think it was google images i don't believe i found this one on pinterest but i'll pop that up on the screen for you now so that you can kind of see the sort of style that we were going for with this but again very uncomfortable for me I've, I've tried this style so many times and failed miserably so many times I think with this one I think we kind of nailed it the interior is lovely although the floor plan on the upper floor is slightly awkward <laughs> but we will talk about that more a little bit later on in the video so currently we are working on the exterior here you can see there's a lot of roof pieces that go into this to create these lovely sort of sloped roof types I guess which is very very standard in this kind of style of house now I I don't want to say that I did a ton of research into this particular build style but I've done enough over the last couple of years to know that this is a Dutch colonial and I don't know if it's true Dutch colonial I've no idea <laughs> but I tried okay this is like a for effort right <laughs> so it ends up being three bedrooms and four bathrooms a little bit heavier on the bathroom side just because there are three bathrooms upstairs and then there's a ba there's a bathroom downstairs along with like a laundry room then there's a storage room as well it's such an awkward shape because it's so sort of like it's quite slender but it's very very wide and I did off camera widen it slightly at the back it took me about 20-25 minutes of just like trying to rejig everything and making it a little bit more playable for you guys that obviously use my houses in your gameplay but yeah I <laughs> it was a little bit of a I don't want to say the whole process has been a disaster because that's not the right word for it it's definitely taken a lot of my energy I uh, you have those builds that you enjoy but they exhaust you this is definitely one of those builds I'm so happy that I finally done a house in this style because as I've been, as I said at the start it's taken me so long to try and nail this style and although I don't think I nailed it as such I think I definitely I did okay and we do a lot of things with this house that I wouldn't normally do and I was just about to say you know I I'm so indecisive when it comes to building sometimes you'll see me in the kitchen in particular with the tiles oh my gosh I left it all in the footage because we can have a bit of a laugh together, a bit of a giggle when we get onto the interior of the house, but oh my gosh, it was bad. I must have gone through like 15 to 20 different swatches and I'm like, I still can't pick out what I, what I want, what I'm looking for. This style is so not a style that I'm comfortable with, but I wanted to... I've been wanting to try this style of house for so long, I can't even tell you, and I, the day's finally come when I've produced something that's actually half decent. <laughs> so I'm so proud of this one. I really am. It's not one of my favorite builds by any stretch of the imagination, but I'm proud of it nonetheless. And we, there's, there's some slight things that change with the exterior that I didn't include in footage. Um, I was just about to say the the path. I'm, you'll have to bear with me today as well because it feels like it's been so long since I've done a voiceover. In reality, it's only been six days, <laughs> but I feel a little bit rusty, so you'll have to bear with me. I'm also incredibly warm today. It's really warm here in the UK. I think it's about 17, 18 degrees, which is quite warm for us. We're having a very warm spring so far, and I'm, I'm just, I'm warm. I've had to close the window in the office because of outside noise, and I'm just like, oh, I'm getting a bit sweaty. So anyway. <laughs> <laughs> TMI, TMI. Anyway, moving on. We have started on the landscaping. Uh, I did my usual Rachel style of I just I just added a bunch of plants, a bunch of bushes, and hoped for the best. With this house, it's slightly more manicured because of the style of house that it is. It's a it's a very very high end house. It's very well kept inside. It's very well kept outside too. And um, this is me just sorting out the the back of the house. Although I don't know why I included this in the footage because I ended up. Oh, did I include the, the footage of me doing this? Okay, I've just surprised myself because I am sure I made it wider off camera. Now I'm thinking I did it all on camera. Anyway, it doesn't matter. <laughs> the landscaping stumped me just a little bit. So we do end up going back 
into um, doing the exterior in just a moment. So what I tend to do is I'll tend to start a house and then I will I'll put like a little teaser um, mainly on Twitter, but I've started posting them on my community tab on my YouTube channel as well. So if you're not subscribed already, um, please consider doing so and turn your notifications on so that when I post a video or when I post something on my community tab, you get notified so you can see it straight away. But I post behind the scenes like footage, not footage, but like screenshots of builds that I've got currently in progress. And this was one of them. And when I was looking at the, the picture, I was like, there's so much that I want to change. So I ended up doing most of it off camera, even though the main structure doesn't really change. It was, there was just little bit, little niggly bits that were just kind of annoying me. <laughs> so I decided to fix them off camera. One of them being the windows at the front here on this middle section. I went through, oh, it must have been five or six, maybe even seven different window options before I actually landed on the ones that I ended up using. <laughs> I, just, I really wish I wasn't so indecisive. Unfortunately, it's one of my negative traits. I am the, the most indecisive person you'll probably ever come across. And when it comes to doing buildings and, and like stuff in The Sims, it's so exhausting because you're always wanting to change stuff. And then sometimes you don't know if you've changed it to make it better or is it worse? And it's just like, oh, sometimes it just exhausts me. <laughs> anyway, so here you will see, this is after I'd looked at the screenshot. So you'll see we are just changing the, from the terrain paint, we're, we're changing it to like the more concrete one because it just made more sense. It looked more manicured and you Sims obviously have like a designated path leading to what there is of the back garden. It's not a very big back garden. My plan was to give you guys a swimming pool with this house, but I set it quite far back. I don't know why I do this. I set, the ha I set my houses quite far back on the lot. <laughs> One would assume it's because I like doing front landscaping and I don't really like doing gardens in the back. So I think subconsciously, I just give myself as much smaller pit space. That doesn't even make sense. A smaller space as possible so that I don't even have to attempt to do a decent garden, <laughs> which I think is really, really funny. But I think subconsciously that that's probably the thought process there. Anyway, so you will see we've put like this cute little picket fence around the pathway. I just think it finished it off really nicely and it gave this house this really picturesque, like suburban vibe and I I just love it. I love American suburban houses. I, I've talked about this before. I love doing my cottages in um, Brindleton Bay, what am I talking about? In Henford on Bagley because I'm be, with being from the UK, I love cottages. I love building cottages, like older English style farmhouses and things like that. I love doing them. If you haven't already guessed, <laughs> because my previous two speed builds, my latest two builds have both been farmhouses in uh, Henford on Bagley. But I love American suburban houses. There's just something about them that's so warm, and welcoming and homey whilst keeping like this lovely open feeling. I just, I just love them so much. So I tried to do as much research as I can before I do builds. With this one in particular, I definitely didn't want to get the style wrong because it is such a unique design style of house, like Dutch colonial. It fascinates me, like the roofing just blows my mind it really really does and I think it looks so unique I think it's probably the word I would use anyway this is the back of the house it pretty much replicates the front which is very unusual for me normally my family houses are slightly different at the back and than they are to the front with this one because it's such a symmetrical house I mean it, it's it's symmetrical and it's not obviously you can see on the left here there's like a longer bit because on the reference image that's kind of what I saw um, I could be completely wrong but <laughs> from what I remember of the reference image I tried to make it as close to that as possible now usually what I do with my builds is I'll use a reference images image I'll use a reference image excuse me as like a loose sort of inspiration and then I'll go in and I'll just do my own sort of thing but using that when I get stuck, you know, for like the shape on, and colour schemes and things like that. But with this one, I, ke I kept it pretty much true to the picture. I'm not sure about the colour scheme because I can't, off the top of my head, <laughs> remember the colour scheme that this one had. So I'm not entirely sure. But anyway, that doesn't matter. We do some landscaping at the back, but then we, we do stop and move on to the interior very shortly. And then I just end up adding like a swing set and a barbecue and a seating area in the back garden just because there isn't much space. So I don't do that on camera. So, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I, 
I tried to include as much footage as I possibly can, but with this one, with it being such a big house, I think it's going to be... I'm just having a look now over 30 minutes long including screenshots in the end screen so I I, I just think yeah I, it, it's a long one so you'd better get snuggled up for this one <laughs> so we do move on to the interior very shortly and then the floor plan this is my third attempt at working out a floor plan just for the downstairs I tried to go onto Pinterest to research some floor plans for this style of house and they didn't really help because they all seem to be much smaller than this one so I was like okay I'll just go back in with a fresh mind and then I'll just try and work something out so on this floor we have a kitchen dining storage we have a downstairs bathroom and a laundry room that's kind of like one room but split with a wall with an archway we have a downstairs office there's a separate dining room, there's a couple of hallways, and then there's obviously a living room as well. Now, if you want to, if you have a slightly larger family um, in this build, then you can turn the office into a bedroom. I was initially going to use it as a bedroom, and then I thought, well, I've got plenty of space upstairs, so I'll just fit four bedrooms up there. But by the time I'd gone up, I realized I only had space for three bedrooms. The master bedroom has an ensuite, and then there's another bedroom that also has an ensuite that I had in my mind would be for like an older like teen sim or like a student sim but we'll talk about more we'll talk more about that excuse me when we get onto the upstairs so this is the living room I love this room so very much I wanted to start in here and I use a lot of items from cats and dogs because in my opinion the items from that pack are very true to the style of the build that we were going for with this one so it just made all the sense in the world this fireplace although i don't use it very often i love it it's beautiful the only thing i've realized that this house doesn't have is a tv <laughs> so you might want to consider adding a tv in one of the rooms but <laughs> i'm so sorry i i think i was just trying my best to nail the style that i forgot how important a TV was so you might want to you might want to put one of the uh, put a TV in somewhere sorry I'm, I feel like I'm so rusty with my voiceovers at the moment I need to get back into this <laughs> this is professionalism at its best right now you guys <laughs> so with this space it's it's quite long and slim but it's a really really good sized family room so your sims can enjoy so many holidays here they can just enjoy some family time if they want to it's it's a very very cozy house and I, I love the vibe that it gives off it's definitely just very homey and family friendly so i really hope you guys have a family in mind as to who you might want to move in here you'll have to let me know feel free to tweet me send me a message on instagram like you guys do you know that it just makes my day when you do that <laughs> so this room is pretty much already done we just add some finishing touches here and there and with with me placing the windows where i place them i realized that i kind of shot myself in the foot when i was putting up the curtains because <laughs> <laughs> I struggled so much with not only curtain size but like because I'd put some of the cut sorry excuse me because I put some of the windows like quite close together and um, it didn't really work in terms of the curtains so you'll have to excuse me on that one I suppose is the best way to put it because I just I didn't know what to do I did use these curtains from cats and dogs again just sticking true to the style and the um, the flooring is from base game and the wallpaper is also from base game I use this wallpaper all throughout the house even in the bathrooms and in the kitchen we end up just deciding to go with this wallpaper here which I don't think makes a lot of sense but I just could not find a swatch of a wallpaper that looked good in the kitchen so I'll talk about it more when we get onto it, but you'll see exactly what I mean. <laughs> now we move on to the dining room. It was really important to me that this family had a separate formal dining room because I feel like in this style of house, that's just what the house would have. Um, I personally don't have a separate dining room. Uh, I don't know if any of you guys do. I know my parents do. My sister does in her house as well. We unfortunately do not. <laughs> we have a kitchen dining Technically, our living room is supposed, like a part of our living room is supposed to be the dining area, but we decided to turn it into a reading nook. I think I've talked about this on the channel before as well, but we have not been blessed with a separate dining room. Um, it's something that I would love to have in the future. It's just not something that we have right now. So I, I just live vicariously through my Sims houses. <laughs> so when I get the opportunity to give them a separate dining space, I that's just what I do. <laughs> so this also has the same fireplace as the living room, just for a bit of continuity. 
uh, in the same swatch I was just about to say I can't remember if I changed the swatch or not but I did I swapped it back to the same one from the living room I believe it is the same isn't it yes it is <laughs> I'm just having a look on the screen now as I'm watching it yes it's the same um, and then we also add there's a lot of items from cottage living in this house as well I could have very easily made this house by just using base game cats and dogs and cottage living i don't think it would have been a problem at all it's just that it's been so long since i've done a pack restricted build i really have to gear myself up to do them because they are quite difficult to start off with i think once you once once you get the ball rolling it's absolutely fine but oh to start off with it's just uh it's just, a t it's a task, it's a chore. <laughs> That's probably the best way to describe it. Anyway, dining room is pretty much already done. It's not a very big dining room, but it's definitely big enough for six sims to sort of enjoy each other's company, whether it be like a winter fest meal or a Sunday dinner or something like that. It's kind of perfect for that. But as I was saying, um, if you wanted to turn the office into a bedroom, you you absolutely could because at the moment this house can only sleep up to four sims so i think for the size of the house <laughs> you think looking from it you'd be like maybe it's about six bedrooms mm, no it's only three and that's probably because of the floor plan downstairs and then with the space upstairs just being how it is it just proved to be more of a challenge than I had originally anticipated unfortunately <laughs> sometimes that happens and it's okay to step away from something and be like I could have done that a bit better but I'm still proud that I did it this is definitely one of those houses <laughs> but yes this is the kitchen this is my fourth start over with this kitchen I tried to do this four times on before this I was just like I'm not convinced I can even do this so we end up using these counters from the parenthood pack do they go with like the Dutch colonial vibe probably not but I figured if I use them in this blue swatch then at least they would tie in with the color scheme <laughs> instead of the style per se but maybe the family that moved in here maybe they've just recently renovated the kitchen or something I'm not saying these counters aren't traditional they absolutely are it's just I just don't think they give off quite the right vibe but again it's okay to, to admit that and just step away and be like I'll learn for next time you know I'll try another Dutch colonial at some point but maybe it'll be a while before I do it because like I said this has drained my energy <laughs> so kitchen it's very large very large and in charge <laughs> now this is me uh, if you're counting I, I've lost count already as to how many times I've changed the swatch I tried parenthood tiles I tried base game tiles I tried so many things and I was like nothing is looking right I just I hate everything <laughs> so I, I mean I could have kept it with that one um, or even this one I think this one's fine as well but I yeah I not not a happy place whilst I was doing this I think I even had to step away for a while and then I came back to it and I was like okay it's fine we can do this <laughs> so I end up just using don't ask me what that turquoise swatch is doing on the wall right now I have no idea <laughs> so I end up just using this base game paneling which is used throughout the house as I said does it make much sense no probably not but it, it's the one that looked the best out of the bunch <laughs> so if you want to change this if you move your sims in here please feel free to do so because I wouldn't blame you if you did and if you do please tell me which one which swatch and where the where it is from because I really had no idea what to put there <laughs> it's really funny when you're doing a style that you're not used to doing that you find a bit awkward just how difficult it is sometimes and that's why it's so good to step outside of your comfort zone and try new things so that you can just learn and grow and I mean I don't want to be doing suburban houses all the time because you guys would probably get bored that's why I try and do all these different styles and I don't release things that I'm not proud of or I'm not comfortable with because at the end of the day I don't play in these houses you do and I want to offer you the best that I can offer <laughs> I hope that makes sense anyway the kitchen took me a little while because it, it just did and if you find me randomly pausing it's because yesterday whilst I was trying to film this my dogs were just I mean I don't know what happened yesterday I, I really don't know what happened they were just like acting crazy <laughs> <laughs> like running around the house so me and my husband were just like trying to get them settled so if you find the footage pausing every now and again it's because I was in the middle of sorting the dogs out 
anyway <laughs> so the kitchen also has a dining space but this is probably more like an informal dining area where your sims would probably just eat most of their meals and maybe the the other dining room the more formal one would be used for holidays and more formal sit downs if they have friends over and things like that you know if they were celebrating um winterfest or new year or something whatever you want to do with this um i don't know which table they would gravitate more towards i would assume the one in the kitchen but it's the sims so it could very well be the one on the other side of the house who knows at this point <laughs> i also find it really funny how the living room and the kitchen are literally on opposite ends of this huge long house <laughs> If you lived here, you'd, if you're like wanting to just chill in the living room while your tea was cooking, you'd literally be just like going backwards and forwards. At least you could get your steps in, I suppose. I suppose that's the silver lining. <laughs> but this is one of the entryways. So the entryway with the stairs is like the small one. Then I didn't know what to do with this space, so I turned it into like a second entryway, which how common is that in floor plans? I really have no idea because I tend to just make up my floor plans as I go along. <laughs> <laughs> so again I, th I think there's a lot of wasted space in this house in that we could have turned so much fit into like more functional space but I, I really didn't know what else to do with the interior for this particular house so I made the best of it. <laughs> <laughs> be really interesting to see if you guys come up with a better floor plan i have no doubt that you could i have absolutely no doubt at all <laughs> so this is the uh, the entryway as you walk into the house where the stairs are located not much going on here at all but then i actually film me doing the bathrooms and the utility room and the storage room as well i didn't film me doing the bathrooms on the upper floor just because they're basically replicas of this particular bathroom here just with slightly different layouts and um, if you're new to the channel that is what i do if you're returning to the channel then you'll know that's that's just how we roll around here <laughs> once you've seen one of my bathrooms you've seen them all <laughs> so it was important to me to give this family a separate we would call it a utility room in the uk i don't know what you guys would call it like a laundry room or something like that but i liked how it was separated slightly from the downstairs bathroom and it is a full bathroom as well so it's a four full bathroom house <laughs> which is just crazy i wish i'd have done the floor plan for the upper floor before i'd done the office on the ground floor because i would have been tempted to turn that into probably a guest room or a room for an older child it, I mean I really don't know um so I wouldn't blame you at all if you ripped out that office and decided to turn it into a bedroom because I wish I'd have done that <laughs> this is the storage room I envisioned this family having either a cat or a dog I envisioned a dog but obviously if you've got a cat you've got a cat so there is a pet bowl in here as well along with just some like random items because I didn't know what else to do with this room again I could have turned it into a bedroom but with the window placement and the shape of the house, like how would that have looked? How would that have worked? Probably not that well. And then I'm thinking, well, the bedroom would be off the kitchen. That doesn't make any sense either. So I, I think it's, it's just the best that it can be. It's <laughs> what I'm trying to say. We also have this like robotic vacuum cleaner because if you guys, if, if your Sims have pets, excuse me, then it can go around and like pick up all the pet hair which I think is very handy. So yeah, just adding some more clutter here just to make it look a little bit more like a storage closet. And then we move on to the office. I really like this office actually. This this is possibly one of my favorite rooms in the house. Um, if you've got Sims that have working from home jobs, you know, if, they, if they're a writer or something like that, then this would be just perfect. And I'm trying to count how many times I use this hanging plant from the Blooming Rooms kit. I think I used it in pretty much every single room in this house. <laughs> I love it so much especially in this swatch it's so soft and pretty and it just adds a little bit of something if you don't know what to put in a corner it's just a really really good item to use I think <laughs> so there are two armchairs in here just in case the kids want to hang out with mum and dad when they're doing some work from home which I thought was a really sweet idea but yes again it's a well presented room so it's in keeping with the rest of the house again using the paneling from the base game but in this lovely blue swatch so it matches the living room it was really really important to me to just keep everything really flowing in this house and I even did it with the with the kids rooms upstairs as well which I was quite proud of because I, I normally go like to town on the kids rooms but I kept it quite toned back and quite in keeping with the with the style so I was quite proud of that one so this is the floor plan upstairs as you can see it's incredibly awkward but I, I, I think I use the space to the best of my ability you guys can obviously agree or disagree that's the wonderful thing about having opinions <laughs> but I, I tried to just make the best of it because as you can see it's it's not the most uh, sophisticated space in the 
in the world. It's so funny. Like looking back, I'm like, oh no. <laughs> but it's fine. It's functional. You guys can use it. All the beds are functional. Everything. So it does the job basically which is great <laughs> so this is the master bedroom i actually really like this master bedroom and i never ever say that about these rooms because i always struggle so badly with master bedrooms i don't know why they just really stump me sometimes but this one it's so warm and cozy there's a fireplace in here there's a little armchair near the fire as well it's just I love it so much and I, I'm just really really happy with how it came out I used so many items from cats and dogs in this room you forget just how many items we got with that pack how many amazing items we got with that pack and I love using them I love pairing them with items from cottage living too I just think they work so well together so yes this is the master bedroom it's a really really nice size I added a wardrobe here because there was this really awkward space just on the left hand side of the room so I was like I'll tell you what we can put a built-in wardrobe there and then that would solve our problem and it did <laughs> so I'm really really happy with that there's an ensuite as well but again I think after I finished this room I didn't include the footage but I go off and I furnish all of the three bathrooms up here and then we move on to the bedrooms but you'll see exactly what I mean in just a moment when we transition over because you'll realize that all the bathrooms are magically furnished it only took me about 15 minutes to finish all the bathrooms 15 20 minutes so it wasn't too bad it was basically just me copy and pasting <laughs> most of the items from the other bathrooms but this is another double bedroom and i had in mind that this was for like a teenage daughter um maybe if she's not a teenager she could be a student at university or something like that but she's got her own ensuite which i think is very fancy so I could have turned it into a main bathroom, but we already had one. So I was like, oh, it might be kind of nice if this Sim has her own bathroom. So that was the sort of thought process with that. Initially, I was going to do like a pinky purple theme. And then I think we land on more of like a white and green theme. I just thought it was really delicate and pretty without being overly girly. So I really, really liked how that turned out. And then so it's just me basically changing the swatches of the items that we'd already put down and then working with those colors to add more items into the room so she's got a dresser here and um, with just some bits on it and these candles and those flowers from my wedding stories it's my wedding stories is that what it's called i feel like it is anyway the wedding pack <laughs> i love them so much i haven't actually used them in a build before but i came across them and i was like oh yes they would look really really nice in here and so she's got her desk as well so she can do her homework and things like that with just a little laptop here if you don't have want the laptop you can put a computer here or if you don't want to have a laptop you can take it off so she can just do her homework here whatever works for you really I'm j I was just trying to tick as many boxes as possible for this particular sim and then <laughs> I tried to disguise my odd window placement with these curtains from the base game in the nice white swatch just to kind of keep everything quite neutral in this room in terms of obviously we've got like the green and the white going on so I just wanted to try and keep it all like fluid and sort of like matching <laughs> so yeah I, that was me just trying to hide the weird window placement I don't think I did it very well but at least you can't really um can't really see just how weird the window placement is <laughs> now we move on to the final bedroom i had in mind this was for a little boy and he's really into he wants to be a vet when he grows up um, and he's obsessed with dogs which is why the family has a dog so i i try not to do this kind of thing with my builds um be, like give the sims characteristics because there isn't a family available for this house but that was my sort of thought process behind that but we are pretty much near the end so i will leave you guys here but you can get the house from the gallery right now my origin id is rachel ped tray files as always are linked down in the description box below you can get them for free from sim file share but thank you so so much for joining me here today everyone i hope you have the most amazing day ever and i will see you next time i post a video bye